Hello guys, Norman here, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the dynamics to a ceramic glaze. So without further ado, let's get after it. Ceramic glazes are an essential part of the pottery process, and that's me speaking as a professional. You can use a ceramic glaze if you want to, and if you don't want to, that's perfectly fine as well. The reason for wanting to can vary. Maybe you want your piece to be more functional. Maybe you want it to be better sealed and protected. Or maybe you're just fascinated with the color of purple and you just want some sort of shiny, glossy purple looking to your structure. For whatever reason that you have, you can use a glaze to help compensate for that. Or maybe you don't have a reason and that's perfectly fine. Now me speaking as a professional potter, I can honestly say that before you use a glaze, you need to know what it is. So here's a definition from the internet. A ceramic glaze is an impervious layer or coating of a vitreous substance which has been fused to a ceramic body through firing. Glaze can serve to color, decorate, or waterproof an item. Now that's the definition for a ceramic glaze. And because I read to you the definition from the internet, you should know right away what a ceramic glaze is. If you don't, that probably means that you lack expertise, in which case I'll elaborate. A glaze contains glass and other minerals and then you apply it on top of a clay structure. Once applied on top, then you place it into a kiln and then you put it through a firing process. And through this firing process, the glaze becomes into a liquid state and then eventually when it gets to a high enough temperature, it shuts off, it cools down and this liquid state glaze goes back to a solid state and through this whole process goes through this chemical and physical reaction in which case you get the finished result. Something kind of like this. A nice smooth finish. Now you may be asking yourself, what are the essential factors for making up a ceramic glaze? Ah, good question. Here's the answer. There's four different factors that you have to look at. The first one is a glass-like substance usually in the form of silica. The second a fluxing agent in order to lower the melting temperature of the silica. These can be through forms of magnesium oxide, calcium oxide, boron, potassium, sodium, and so on. The third is alumina or Al2O3. This acts as a big contributor to stabilizing your glaze. And the fourth one is clay in order to help suspend the glaze slurry. In order to get started, you have to have a basic idea of what chemistry is and physics. The truth is, you're gonna have to act kind of like a scientist. You're going to have to sort of break things down and really analyze the nitty gritty details. And, and for instance, if you have too much fluxing agent, the glaze can melt off the wear. And if you have too little fluxing agent, it won't melt enough. So it won't have a smooth finish. So you have to be accurate with that. When preparing your glaze, you will want to source everything from raw materials, measuring them in the correct amounts. Once measured out, you will want to sieve them and get rid of all the big clumps, and then add water. Anyway, once you have all that taken care of, you can apply your glaze on top of your pottery ware. You can either use a brush and brush it on, you can dip the, the pottery piece into a glaze, you can pour a glaze onto your pottery piece, you can use a spray gun, you can use your finger. In the end, it really doesn't matter as long as you get the glaze on there. Then after that, you put it in the kiln, you put it through the kiln firing process, let it cool down, then you take it out of the kiln and boom, bada bang, it's finished. See how easy it is? Just make sure that it's at the proper temperature range. If not, it probably won't come out looking good. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you are interested, I made another video about this subject but I go in more depth and more detail. If you're interested, the link to it is in the description box below. So you should click on that link and watch that. Oh, and another thing too, if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you wanna watch more of my videos, hey, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't kill you. And as always, thanks. Thanks for watching.